So we use kerosene and candles in our house. I do have a flashlight that I can use if I need to in an emergency, but we do find that we sleep better, we're less anxious, and the night just winds down so much nicer if I don't get that flashlight out and we just use our candles and our kerosene. Now, I do have a very strong preference about which kind I like to use in certain situations. So these little cuties that you will see at every secondhand store everywhere, <laughs> These are really neat because they reflect light back into the room. Here's the candle, it's lit right here and it reflects it back. The problem with this particular one is that it's made out of plastic. If your candle happens to run all the way down, it will actually start to burn your plastic and you'll start to smell smoke and um, you can have a fire hazard, major fire hazard if it's plastic. Now. Before I go any further, I will mention that I do not light anything in the house and then leave the house. And we also do not have anything that is lit that is on at night when we are asleep. Um, so we, this is strongly supervised lighting. I don't leave the kids to light it. The kids are not allowed to light it. If they want to blow it out, they have to blow it out with my supervision. I have to be standing behind them type of a thing. We have a wood house, we have curtains and I have kids. So highly supervised. Now, this is another one that is, sorry, <laughs> that fly is driving me crazy. This is another metal one. And it doesn't have the reflector, but that's not the reason why I don't like it. The reason I don't like it is because when you put it on a wall, it pivots on the top so that it, it can kind of, I'm not sure how to show you, but it, it can pivot like this. It kind of moves. It's not really held solidly to the wall. So I don't like these. Even though it's metal, I don't like it. It's just a little too precarious. And then we have this one. This one is wood. It has the reflector on it, but the, the holder itself is metal. This is my favorite. And it has a little hook eye thing in the back that holds it pretty securely to the wall. So favorite one. It took us a few to figure out that that was our favorite one. And um, the reason I know that is because when I put this one up, even though I noticed that it was plastic I, and I was going to keep a, a close eye on it, I did have a night where it did burn down to the end. Sorry. It, I did have a night where it did burn down to the end and we did get a smell of smoke and it did turn out that it was melting. So this one just needs to go in the trash. I'm not going to send it back to DI second answer or anything. It just goes in the trash because I don't want to, I don't want somebody to buy it and have their house burn down. Now this is more like a barn. This is more like a barn lantern. Um, it has some safety features that say this one doesn't have. So this one, you, you have this little flipper thing that lifts the glass up so that you can light through here. And you can, you can unscrew it so that it comes up, so that the top comes off the glass so that you can clean it but it's a little bit tedious. Doing that is a little bit tedious. Um, so this one I like is a safety feature that it, it, it has a wide base, it has a good handle, and um, it's, I don't know, I just like how solid it is. However, I don't light a kerosene lantern unless it's secured to something. This one has this little clip here. I, I don't put it on a hook, I put it on a whole eye. So I'll, I have like an eye that's up in a rafter and this clips onto it securely so that it snaps on. So that if somebody hit their head on it or something, it wouldn't knock it off a hook. Instead it's snapped on. So that's good. A little harder to clean. This one fits into a wall mount that goes like this. And it's it sits pretty flush to the wall and, and we've never had anybody bump it. But of all of them, this might be the least safe because you do have it in a holder on a wall. If somebody did bump it and it fell, um, you would have, not necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily have kerosene every, everywhere because it is contained inside this and it is closed. But great, probably this is the greatest fire hazard because it isn't actually locked into any kind of platform. It isn't hooked into anything. It's just, it's just on that that arm that grabs around and holds it like that. 
However, this is my favorite one to clean. Um, let's see if I can find a paper towel. One of the tricks of kerosene is not to let your wick be too tall. If your wick is too tall, then it, um, it, it burns dirty. If it's low, then you get just enough light and it burns clean. But you see how, how easily that cleaned up and, and I can get my hand into it easily and it just wasn't a big deal to get in there and clean it really well. Now, this again, if you're, if you're in an awkward situation, you have a wood burning stove or something, sometimes, sometimes when you get into this using fire for your lighting and your heating situation, your brain isn't in those normal avenues like they would have been a hundred years ago. Sometimes it's easy to forget and you have a wood burning stove and, and you forget that it's a bad idea to put a kerosene lamp on top of a wood burning stove ever because you get in the habit of putting it there and if you put it there in the summer you may forget and put it there in the winter. Um, just things like that. Remember to, to use common sense. Don't store combustible items in your wood burning stove. Don't store paper or candy or fabric or anything in your wood burning stove in any place. And um, make sure to just respect the tools for what they are. They're great, they're fun, they're wonderful, but um, I, I feel like maybe we're not as good at respecting them as somebody 100 years ago would have. And so I, I will say that I think we sleep better. I love using fire for, for light. The kids love it. it. It always just makes us tired at night and soothes us and makes it easy to go to bed and just feel rested in the morning. So um, the other nice thing is we have cool nights right now and, and these actually do warm the house up just slightly before we go to bed. So um, if you have any questions about off-grid lighting and I can help you with them, make sure to ask. And I'm not giving you advice about what you should do in your own home. I'm just saying what I've done in my home. Except I am giving advice that you use caution. So we'll talk to you later.